coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Right now, in Orange Juice, we are playing the greatest poker game we've ever seen. Everybody is bluffing everybody else. You make the market 340 bid, and I won't say anything. 32 bid, 32 bid. Today I have an important job interview with a banker. It's very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You should know this. Tonight is a very big night for us. Sanders' earnings calls at 4 o'clock. Here we go, let's go! Didn't sleep that well last night. Our whole book's concentrated in Sanders. I'd say one of the biggest days of me and Jimmy's career. It's four in the morning now. I've uh, been in the office for about 24 hours. Just tell me the good news, not the bad news. You have to be able to work for 36, 48 plus hours straight through the night. Thank you very much. Got a bunch of deadlines in the morning. We have to have a term sheet out to a company that we're hoping to be able to invest into. We also have a meeting with a very large investor. We've got probably six more hours of work to get done in the next three hours. So we have to get their information in front of them for the meeting or that's it. We'll miss the opportunity of them being able to invest into our new fund. And our attorneys right now are actually still working. The books are being printed now. We have until 8.30. Everything absolutely needs to get done on time. Family, business, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a very it's big good. opportunity for us. It's left for good to these books. I'm gonna call, just make sure it's on its way. Let's circle back. Um, so it's 4.30 in the morning now. I'm almost done turning this document. Yeah, I'm drinking some coffee and trying to stay awake. My partner just went home. He's gonna come back in in two hours so he can actually take a fresh look at the work to make sure there's nothing that we missed. After I finish everything up here, I'm gonna run home, have a cold shower, I lay down, try to close my eyes for 20 minutes, set three or four alarms, just try to reset the bearings and be fresh for morning. You know, really I need two hours of productive fresh time in the morning. You only have one shot to make a first impression. It's morning here in Paris, and today I have an important job interview with a banker. I'm only 21, but to me it's, it's really important to be financially independent. I don't want to rely anymore on my parents. That's why this job interview is really important for me. My family is originally from France. French is my first language, but I have some work experience in the States. So I think a combination of France and America would be a good fit for the position. Oui, bonjour. Oui, ça va et vous? Oui, très bien. That was Richard. Um, I'm meeting him in a couple hours in his office. So I probably, yeah, I definitely need to get going now. From what I understand, he does a lot of business all over the world. A friend of mine from school told me he's looking to hire more analysts for his company. I am a little nervous. I hope he thinks I'm qualified. I just graduated from NYU three months ago, so my resume is not that impressive. I just hope he thinks my background, my profile, is a good fit for his company. It's hard. It's like uphill. It's going to be tight to get to the meeting time. We have to get the books printed. That usually takes a few hours, so it's going to be right at the deadline. A meeting with a large insurance company who's looking to invest in us. Big companies like that especially, where they have to get an audience together. It's tough for them to all orchestrate their team, so you really can't be late. As you can see, I like a lot of ties. It makes wearing ties a little bit more exciting. 
I have a different color set and type of tie for every type of environment. Blues, more neutral. Of course, reds for your power ties. Then you have seasonal ties as well, like greens, um, yellows, and so forth. I've been up all night tonight. Typically, once to twice a week, we have an all-nighter. You train yourself to be very disciplined and organized, and that, that's the key. Everything's scheduled, everything's agended. Short-term memory gets a bit slower when you get tired. You've got it written down, so you've covered it, and you're ready. A couple weeks ago, a private forecaster came out and predicted a much larger oranges crop than we had expected. As a result, we lost $910,000 on that day. In actuality, the crop was exactly what we thought it would be. So the market went back the other way, and we ended up making back the $910,000 and then a couple million on top of it. Nothing. You guys can see from this chart, we've had this big drop in oranges. Orange juice just had a 30 cent down move in three days. We trade expectations more than reality, or in essence, perception in here is reality. So the perception or the fear right now is what's driving the market. 32 men, 34 men. Right now, in Orange Juice, we are playing the greatest poker game we've ever seen. The reason for that is every single market maker who has a position in there is bluffing their positions. You make the market 340 bid, and I won't say anything. And everybody is bluffing everybody else. I'm bluffing the guy standing next to me who's bluffing me back. Right now, my hand happens to be my position that I've been putting on over the last couple of months. I have thousands of call options and put options, and the poker hand right now is not to let anybody know what I have on. A lot of times you have to hide your orders, you have to, you know, offer one thing when you're really trying to buy another. And uh, even away my trade secrets over here, but... <laughs> if I go in there and bid for the calls that I want to buy, the crowd's going to sense that and they're going to raise them on me. If I send a broker in there and I stand here and offer him, well, maybe the crowd will offer and he could lift them. So let's, let's just see what happens. Bobby, do me a favor. Chan 85 calls? I will actually have a broker come into the ring with a buy order and I'll start offering to sell those options, even though I'm a buyer. Because what will happen is I might convince the guys next to me to offer also. And then the broker who's got my order goes buy it. And now I've secretly bought my options, even though I'm perceiving to be selling it in the ring. That's the high stakes poker game. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Tonight is a very big night for us. We've got size on the table right now. Our whole book is concentrated in Sanders. As we're going into maybe a recession, this is when we begin to make uh, good money. Mm -hmm. Here we go, let's go! You want to see progress? The hell's it doing? Hello, Brian. Uh, listen, calling you real quick to touch base on SanDisk. Uh, you own 2,000 shares with us. Let me ask you, have you been following the story at all? Over the past six to eight weeks, SanDisk stocks pulled back a little bit, which always uh, rustles up a little feathers with some of the clients. We've been handling phone calls, easing some fears a little bit. Okay, so you've seen that um, obviously we pulled back. When we first invested, it was around $35. Uh, a lot of our clients got in around $44. After last earnings, they hit great results. The stock ran all the way up to $60. We were very excited. There's great prospects with this company. So we didn't sell it off, we held on to it. Uh, then that's when our, our character got tested a little bit because it pulled back to $46. Today it's at $50, a uh, touch under $50. Now tonight is a very big night for us. Uh, we got another earnings call. Bottom line is we think that tonight with earnings we'll see a very good number. Earnings calls at four o'clock. Um, that's when the numbers will be released. We'll, we'll hear everything about 4.05. I'd say probably one of the biggest days of me and Jimmy's career. You know, we've got size on the table right now. Our whole book's concentrated in Sanders, you know? If this thing works out, we look like absolute heroes. Hopefully, we'll see five to six points tonight. Obviously, um, that'd be very aggressive. It'd be about a 10, 12% move for the company. 
Uh, we'll be very happy around here if that happens. For our group, it's really important tonight. All our clients, all the major positions are in it. So if this goes southward, it, you know, it's really going to hurt. And for Jim and Lance, I mean, they're, it's kind of like their whole careers up to this point. Big night. <laughs> Big night. Didn't sleep that well last night. Uh, I probably won't sleep that well tonight. Ideally, it's up huge and we're selling the stock for profit. All our clients will be very happy if we can blow out at a good profit tonight. We're excited, but also very nervous. Okay, enjoy your day. Bye-bye. I made it to the interview on time, but I was a little nervous. I, I always get pretty nervous before interviews. You know, as soon as you walk in the door, you're, you're being judged. I just don't know if I should say what they want to hear, or just be myself, and you know, it's an uneasy situation for me. Richard Alt, nice to meet you. My first impression of Richard was really good. Would you fly in from? He seemed very friendly and outgoing. He's actually American. He's been living in Paris, I think, for 15 years, he told me. Thank you for coming by. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We are looking to recruit one person mm -hmm. at the analyst level, someone right out of undergraduate. Basically, we're looking for a sponge. Uh, we focus primarily on restructurings, on restructuring companies' balance sheets. These are companies which are usually in distress, so we like to see ourselves as kind of doctors to companies. As we're going into maybe a recession, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the subprime mess, um, this is when we begin to make uh, good money. So when everything does crash, we'll be very busy for three, four, maybe even five years. Okay. That's just the cycle. It's very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You should know this. In terms of like your workload, what's a typical day um, like? I mean, I, I heard- The killer question. Yeah. We like to have our analysts in at eight, and the analysts usually leave around nine or 10, but you'll be doing one or two all-nighters a month and at least two weekends per month in the office working on transactions. So we work our analysts hard. And my firm is telling me, you're ready and willing to run through a brick wall and that type of thing. So you really need that if this is something you're going to be serious about. Mm -hmm. I got very lucky today. Orange Juice was up this morning, and I got to sell out about 125 futures contracts. So today worked out perfectly well. I'm now going to go home. Hopefully there's no traffic. And uh, I'm going to barbecue with the family and hang out with everybody and do a little relaxing. I work all the way downtown in Lower Manhattan. I live out in uh, Westchester County in New York, so I have a pretty good commute every day. It takes about an hour and 15 minutes each way. And uh, it actually works out pretty well. It's basically an extra two hours of work that I get done. I get to talk to investors, talk to my traders, and I actually get to accomplish a lot. I'm almost wishing the commute was an extra hour long. It's basically my second office. My uh, Cell phone will not stop ringing. Hey, I'm gonna call you back in one second. Hang on. I'll probably be on the cell phone 20, 25 calls in the next hour. No, if the market is on the cusp, we can't, but you've got days where the market's going one way the whole day. I'm always thinking about the market. I'm trying to stay one step ahead of the market. You get taught in this business that the market is always right, because it is. The market is what pays us, so we need to always respect that marketplace. You know, I wake up every morning with a sense of fear and, you know, to try to make sure that everything is done correctly, that, you know, the strategies are thought through. And that's probably why I've been around for, for 18 years doing it. And this ride's coming to an end. I'm starving. I am ready to start eating. One of the good things with this job is that I'm done at 1.30 from the actual trading aspect of it. I'll get home at 3.30, 4 o'clock, hang out with the kids and the wife, barbecue, and relax. Look at my teacher when we have trombone this time. Nice, boy. Tonight is a very big night for us. You know, we've got size on the table right now. 
our whole book is concentrated in sand disc. Street's looking for 33, 32. Our ideal situation, they come out and say 50 cents. That'd be great. I got a good feeling about tonight. I think they're going to beat Street's estimates. I think the Street's really low right now. So if they come in with a really good number, we could see the stock jump significantly. I think we see, you know, uh, five, six points, and we've got a nice month ahead of us. This is always the worst part, is sitting here waiting for that. Less than one minute, the market's closing. We, we don't know the exact time the number's coming out, but it's imminent. Come on. Mine too, dog. It's not just the number. You know, the number comes out. It can be a great number. The stock could shoot up. If the CEO says one negative thing, the stock will fall, still fall out of bed. There's the bell. All right. Market's closed. Come on, baby. So close now, we can taste it. So we'll see what happens. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Everybody else was friendly. Except for Larry. Any new guy that comes in there, it's quick well, decapitation. That's the bottom one. There's a ball tonight. I have to get up and make a speech in front of a few hundred people. It's high pressure. There's a lot going on. This is when I force myself to take deep breaths. Uh oh, you're running. Numbers out. 54. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. What the hell's it doing? It's trading like crazy. It's just going back and forth, down a little bit to up a little bit. But it hasn't decided which way it wants to go yet. Things all over the place. Wow, look at that thing move. Holy so, I've never seen a stock do that before. Oh, oh. This thing. There's no point in even watching it right now. <laughs> Market still decide what they want to do with the stock. It's a little bit down from the close, but I mean, hit the ball of the park as far as the numbers concerned. Right now, it's battling. It's Just go bonkers one time. 51, come on. Here we go. There it is, 51 bucks. 51? Yep, let's Boom. go. Come on. The number's been out about 25 minutes now. Uh, Marcus had a little bit of time to digest it. Stock is trading higher. It is a good number. I'm a little bit disappointed that the market isn't appreciating the fact that they beat the street by north of 20 cents. Um, definitely thought we saw a better, a better reaction on that. Getting no respect right now. I mean, company comes out and blows away the number, clobbers the number, knocks the cover off the ball. And, uh, you know, we're only up about 50 cents from the close. So that's a little bit disappointing right now. Cross our fingers in the morrow, you know, maybe we're up a couple more bucks. So. So you're comfortable with financial modeling, the accounting, the books, French, English, German? German, <laughs> German we have to see, right. but French and English, yeah. I think even for a yeah. German speaker, it's tough, but. Je vais partir à New York deux semaines. Je vais réfléchir à une offre. J'ai une idée de ce que ce que tu recherches en termes de du package mm -hmm. euh, financier. Tu me dis 50, euh, tu touches 50 000 dollars avant mm -hmm. chez Paribas. Mm -hmm. Tu souhaites la même chose en Europe, surtout avec l'échange en ce moment. Ouais. Bien sûr, nous, euh, dans tout ce qui est banque d'affaires, on donne des primes. Mm -hmm. En fait, euh, tout le monde bosse pour ça. Mm -hmm. Les prix, normalement, ça peut être un multiple de 1, 2 à 3 fois, mm -hmm. même à ton niveau. Mais en contrepartie, il faut que tu sois complètement euh, ouverte à vraiment bosser comme... Euh, malade, un dingue. Comme malade, voilà, comme tu dis. Tout ce que j'ai cité comme exemple, Ça, c'est du réel. Ouais, mm -hmm. euh, ça peut être très intéressant financièrement. Euh, moi, je suis complètement honnête. C'est difficile avec les amis, c'est difficile un peu avec la famille, ouais. parce qu'on est toujours au boulot. A priori, non, c'est quelque chose qui m'intéresserait. Euh, ma famille vient d'emménager ici, donc le fait que je serais basée à Paris, c'est vraiment un point positif. Mais bon, il faut aussi que je considère que j'ai ma vie à New York. Oui. Les heures dont vous me parlez, c'est vraiment quelque chose, il faut que je sois sûre d'être dans le bon état d'esprit, que je sois vraiment prête à, à, mettre, à, faire cet enga à m'engager vous... à ce, ce point-là. Ce n'est pas quelque chose pour vous faire peur, ouais, il faut ouais. juste être réaliste. Mm -hmm. Non, bien sûr, j'apprécie que vous soyez honnête dès le départ. Je, je vais y réfléchir. Hein. Comme vous avez dit, vous partez pendant deux semaines, donc euh, d'ici deux semaines, j'aurai une réponse pour vous. Mm -hmm. pour je vous temps. en prie, bon, très heureux, aussi. très heureux. What happens when you buy the whole side account? My dad is a trader and he says he likes it, but I don't know if I would. If it makes me money, I'll do it. But I'd like to be a baseball player. Mi bonita. I'd like to play for the New York Yankees. And I remember he brought you down to the floor. 
He introduced you to everybody else except the new guy, which right. is me. That, that is true. Really? That is true. I remember that. I don't remember that. Yeah. Everybody else was friendly except for Larry. It's like protecting his territory. So after he found out that I lived up and around the area here, now he's actually one of the nicest guys and become That's one of my good friends since. That's me. Any new guy that comes in there, it's quick well, decapitation. That's the bottom line. First of all, line. it's every trading pit is the same way. Right. Orange Juice Pit is crazy as they think they are. It's pretty civil compared to what the other pits are really like. Hey Andrea, tell Tom uh, about our first date in Central Park. With oh the, my God. Uh, we have this lovely picnic date and he whips out Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> And he's <laughs> chugging it from the bottle. <laughs> like the stomach, sure. he has traitor stomach. Like he's sure. always got like s upset stomach. I mean, if that wasn't a sign that I should have <laughs> cut and run. I, I was probably short the market and the thing was up and I was freaking out about Monday morning. I was just drinking it. She's like, you want some ice with that? It was gross. <laughs> the meeting went really well. There were a lot of very pointed questions. People are trying to grill you quickly, throw you off balance. They wanted, you know, really snappy, quick responses. They verbally indicated they're in the next fund. So the meeting went great and looking forward to hopefully having them as an investor. Now that that meeting's over, we need to switch gears because there's a ball tonight. Getting stuff ready here. This is camera. I sit on the board of the Canadian Association of New York, which is hosting the Maple Leaf Ball, and I'm the vice chairman of the ball tonight, so I have to get up and make a speech in front of a few hundred people, which includes some very senior business executives. It's high pressure, it's frantic, there's a lot going on. This is when I force myself to take deep breaths, take long breaths. I also wrote a quick script for tonight because I'm going to be introducing the former Prime Minister of Canada's son, who's a Master of Ceremonies. I'm really excited. It's the Gotham Hall where we're at. It's an absolutely gorgeous venue. It's an old bank, has 100-foot ceilings. It's a stunning place, and hopefully there will be some good relationships to make tonight. It had been a long day with the interview, so my sister and I went to this cafe. And when I came here, I met the PM. And in fact, he searched for someone to engage for their bureau in Paris. In fact, he proposed a job. He had l'air assez yeah. But the way he said he didn't have a job, he was at the bureau at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then you get out at 9-10 o'clock. Tu bosses deux week-ends par, euh, par mois à peu près, donc euh, il fait, euh, tu peux dire au revoir à tes amis, ta famille, enfin euh, ta, ta famille et tes amis. Mais bon, je sais pas si c'est moi de bosser euh, tu vois, autant d'heures comme ça par jour. Enfin, je sais pas si je... Je, je serais plus que contente que tu raménages euh, à Paris, c'est clair et net. Ouais, mais non. en même temps, tu as toute ta vie à New York, tu as tout. Enfin... Oui, non, moi aussi, ça me, ça me ferait plaisir, mais... Ah oh, oui, c'est ça, j'ai ma vie à New York, enfin, j'ai pas vraiment d'amis ici, bon, c'est vous, il y a vous, il y a toi, papa et maman. Ouais, mais... C'est vrai que ça, ça va être un grand sacrifice si jamais tu raménages à Paris. Bon, en même temps, dis-toi que c'est peut-être l'opportunité de ta vie, tu vois, donc tu peux pas en même temps le balancer. Oui. Il se va à la légère, donc euh, on, va se, on va se revoir d'ici deux semaines, puis dire ce que je vais décider de faire. C'est vrai qu'a priori, ce, je sais pas si je suis prête à faire ce changement, quoi. Faire Pour ce grand saut, ouais, c'est l'argent et le boulot, quoi, c'est pas, y a pas que ça dans la vie. Je say, turn the machines back on. Turn those machines back on. Following us, behind. Yeah, check out the art. The kids are following us. It's not real art. What happened? I went to the trombone. At school? Yeah, my teacher 11. Oh, God. How loud is this going to be in the house? <laughs>